Welcome back to Making Money Matter, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Kerry Stevenson. Sit up and take some notice because you know what I'm like. I love to bring you stories that I've, I've that have come across my desk. Go, what? This is one of those ones where I went, what? Pivotal Metals ASX code is PBT. Ivan Fairhall is the managing director. Only joined in September. Now, some of you are going to know about the history. We're going to go into that, but some of you will not understand why this company has a market cap of 10 million when it's got 6 mil in the bank, but I'm not going to take away all his thunder, but really the EV is about 4 mil. It's crazy stuff. So that's why I'm excited. I want you guys to sit up and take notice because it's copper, it's Quebec, it's exciting. Ivan, great to see you. First time on Making Money Matter. Great to be on, Kerry. A pleasure to be uh, be doing this for the first time. Excellent. Well, the reason I was excited to get you on was because I don't think the market has caught up with there's been big changes. Right? I think the I think the market's still sitting in Spain, but you've moved to Quebec. That's what we want to get into. So let's, because it's your first time, give us the background of who are Pivotal Metals. Exactly. Look, I, I think you're 100 percent correct. So Pivotal Metals, what are we? We are a copper and nickel focused explorer and developer with our projects in the in the top tier jurisdiction of Quebec in Canada. So our flagship project is called Horton Lake, uh, and Horton, Ta- Horton Lake's already got a 410,000 ton contained copper equivalent resource around it. Uh, it's 28 million tons, so one and a half percent copper equivalent, open pitable. Uh, so a very good resource, and we've got a clear plan to grow uh, that asset, advance it, de-risk it, and and really articulate the value of what's already been discovered, as well as how we're going to discover more. Um, and, and, and this is a new project in many respects. You've alluded to a couple of other points there. It's new for Pivotal. It's yep. new on the NSX. Uh, this project was tied up in private ownership for 10 years and they didn't strike a blow on the project. Oh, and wow. So, and so I don't think the market has taken, like you alluded to, it doesn't take an objective look at what we have here. Uh, so that's all in Lake. We've also got a very large exploration uh, package known as BAGB. On that package, we have extremely high grades. There's some, some highlighted intersections shown in our uh, in our corporate presentation. We're talking 10 meters at 3.5%, uh, nickel 4.5% copper and 4.5% Whoa. NGE. Yeah, some punchy stuff. Uh, and But we're looking at so very interesting projects and we're just, looking... It's sorry, great- just, yes, I just want to interrupt you there because I think it's important for people to understand that currently around the world, the copper that is currently being mined is around, what, about one8 maybe 2% if you're lucky, copper grades, and you're talking about grades of 4 plus, are you? Is that right? Oh, I mean, mine grades of copper would be um, no, in the single-digit percentages, I'd say, because it's massively weighted by those very large, extremely high capital uh, porphyry projects. Um, so the higher grade, and that's a, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's a common theme, actually, amongst our projects. Ford and Lake is, is, is high grade. You've got two, two groups of copper, copper, and copper and copper dominant projects, you've got very large, low grade, extremely low grade, and, and, and therefore high capital cost projects, typically porphyry style mineralization, uh, the Escondidas of the world and, and, and whatnot. Then you've got the higher grade projects like Horton Lake, and they're two very d- distinct uh, opportunities. Uh, okay. And uh, yeah, for, for smaller companies and the next mid tier, which I might add does not exist, they're going to have to focus on those high grade projects because they cannot fund multi billion dollar projects. They're, they're two quite different opportunities for uh, for the capital markets. Uh, and speaking of capital markets, I think it's important for people to know, and I want to know as well. You only joined Pivotal in September of this year. I'm talking to you in December 23. You joined the company in September 23. Your background, I think you're a mining engineer, but you spent about seven years in the capital markets. So you must have seen a lot of projects. Ivan, I want uh-huh. to. Yeah, sorry to to cut you off there. That's right. I'm actually a mechanical engineer by background, but I've always worked in in minerals processing and mining. Uh, so over twenty, you know, nearly twenty years now. But but there was a very critical period in the, in the middle of my career there. Seven years I spent at a private equity fund in London, and we spent. You know, we had significant resources. We had five hundred million dollars uh, to deploy. We scoured the globe looking for development stage. So right you know, p- past that 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 high risk exploration stage. We're looking yeah. for assets that are trading at like a huge discount to their value. And and copper, base metals like copper was at least 50% of our focus. And you know what? The projects aren't there. 
they don't exist. There's not this mountain of projects that you you sort of stub your toe on every time you look. Like yeah. they're not. They're all known, and and that's what I like about Pivotal. This project is being. Uh, this Horton Lake project has been flying under the radar. Like, who would have thought there was a, a 410,000 ton copper equipment project on the ASX that probably almost none of your uh, listeners had ever even heard of? And that, that just, that's quite unusual situation to find ourselves in. And we've got a pre-discovery evaluation. And so, look, I joined because... Um, because I see the opportunity in the project and, and and I think we've got a great project. I think it's going to get bigger and better. And it's exactly the kind of sort of opportunity you need to grow a company. I, I alluded to the point before where Spain versus Quebec, because the company did have a tin tungsten project in Spain, didn't work. Uh, the market didn't like it. So they all sort of sold you off. The share price has been sold off. But I don't think they've caught up with the fact that that's that's history, that's gone, and you've got this Horton Lake project as well as the BAGB. Now, I just want to ask you, you mentioned it had been in private hands for 10 years. How the heck did you find it and get your hands on it? Uh, it was a deal done before my time, but a very a very good deal. It was uh, dealt with a, a, a Canadian uh, family mining entrepreneur family effectively and and the the story goes that uh, this is my understanding is that the father um had a had a loan over the project and and foreclosed on that loan when a payment wasn't made and then not long after doing that he died oh. and his children were managing the portfolio but have different perspectives and, and I don't know them as individuals so I don't I don't uh, look to speak for them but but the reality is for 10 years the project had no work done on uh, and and sat in the proverbial bottom, you know, bottom drawer, and 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 that that's that's there's a, a, a really high quality asset that's been picked up, and um, and you're right, the 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 valuation of the company I think is 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 way too focused on on the past. Spain was a difficult period. We were very hard done by by the Spanish government. Uh, they took our mining license off it, of us, and 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 that that is not the right thing to have done, but Spain is a difficult jurisdiction and the decision was rightly made to, to, uh, to, to move focus to, to battery metals for obvious reasons. Everyone yeah. understands the commodity attractiveness. Uh, yeah. and, and, and one of the best jurisdictions in the world, which is Quebec, it's the most supportive mining jurisdiction. And so if you take an objective look at the assets, you can't actually reconcile with the valuation. And you look at the peer group and we've got some information in our corporate presentation and uh, it's a very compelling opportunity. So why do you think the market hasn't caught on yet? Have you been a little bit, I know you've only joined in September, so I'm probably being a bit harsh on you, Ivan, but I just want to know, have you not been out talking about it? Do you, I'm just curious. Uh, well, it's been a busy couple of months. I've been doing lots and lots of things. Uh, but, but the reality is the company, since it has, for various reasons, since the company has picked up the project, it hasn't done any work on them yet. Uh, so this program, this is why right now is such a critical time to be paying attention. We had to do a couple of capital raises to complete the acquisition of the project, fund fund the work program, and then we just raised a couple of million dollars to clean up the balance sheet. There was a convertible loan over there, and 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 when I came in, I took the view that you know, we really need to focus on uh, what are the things that are going to prevent. You know, we, we're about to we've loaded all the bullets into the gun. Okay. We're about to shoot them, right? We've got a work program, uh, drilling, metallurgical twist work, resource update. Next year is chopper block full of news, and it's all starting in January. And we took a look around and we said, what are the things that are going to bring us unstuck here? We had a convertible note that was not a very nice instrument and was putting a lid on our share price. Um, we were running low on sort of hard dollars. Effectively, we had a lot of cash that was committed to the project, uh, but less pro cash to to fund the uh, you know the corporate business. Yep. So we, we took the strategic decision to raise some money, clean up the balance sheet, get rid of the note, kick any um, come raise uh, excuse that people would like to come up with for well into 2025. Now you've only got the only reason there's, there's nothing stopping us from delivering now. And if you want to get a piece of pivotal, you got to come buy it on the market. You can't sit around and wait for us to raise money because that's simply not going to happen. Love it. Pivot now, ladies and gentlemen, with Pivotal. I think that's kind of fun. All right, let's talk about what you're going to do. You're going to start drilling in January? 
Yep, that's right. So we're all set up, fully permitted. We've got everything in place uh, to go and start drilling. We've got an 8,000 metre program focused in on the existing discovery that's been made. Uh, and the reason that we're focusing so closely on the main discovery, because well, there is a lot of potential to grow it, and, and that's going to come over time. But but what we we think we've got, a, you know, a really fantastic asset, something that, that, you know, potentially stands on its own two feet today. And so we want to put the best foot of the project forward. We need to, um, there's some grade upside opportunity. So a big portion of the deposit has only been assayed for copper and nickel, but we know from drilling in parts of the deposit that there's a whole complex of byproducts of gold, silver, cobalt, copper, uh, sorry, gold, silver, cobalt, platinum, palladium. So these oh, wow. things do, they are both products. You, you, you'll get them along with the concentrates and you will get paid a portion of the value of them. And, and there's a bunch of information missing. So we can infill that information, lift that grade even higher. Uh, we can make it bigger through placement of our holes, but this is not a big step out program. That's going to come in the future. There's plenty of resource growth that will come to look forward to after this program. And importantly, we're collecting net sample to demonstrate that that we're going to be able to, um, to essentially uh, get paid for a high proportion of the metals that are in the ground. So how much can you recover and how much will you get paid by this, you know, say, say for example, we send the concentrates to a smelter, you know, what do you get paid for? So it's important to be able to articulate the value of the deposit, not as a discovery and metal in the round, but what's important is how much money is it going to make, you know, what, what, what's, it, what's the revenue line going to look like when you go to extract this stuff and sell it? Yeah, because it's a business at the end of the day. We don't want to go too tight. We want to go, is, is the, are the metals there? What can we extract them for and what can we get for them? Exactly. Yeah. When you speak about Horden Lake, it's Quebec. I just uh, for our audience out there, when you say lake in a in a sentence, people go, "Oh, are there going to be some issues around the environment?" And what's Quebec like as a place to do business in? So Quebec is a great jurisdiction, and I've looked for my sins. I've looked all over the world when I was investing in projects, and and lots of people say they're in a uh, supportive mining jurisdiction. We say it in Australia. But I ask the question, well, what has that jurisdiction actually done for you lately? Now, mm -hmm. in Quebec, we have this thing called, um, oh, in Canada, but Quebec, actually critical metals in Quebec, which is what Port and Lake is, it has Canada's best flow-through share incentive, incentive scheme. So flow-through is not something that's well understood in Australia. It's becoming increasingly uh, well-known through the lithium guys have been raising huge amounts of capital through flow-through. But I'll spare you the technical details. It's a plumbing thing that happens when you go to raise money. But uh, we market the company and find investors down on the ASX. And we did this in May of this year. We raised a couple of million dollars on standard terms, a little bit of a discount to the prevailing share price. In our bank account, we got $4 million put into it, uh, and that's money dedicated to spending the project. So the government is effectively paying half of our exploration cost. Now, you know, it makes um, talking about supportive mining jurisdiction pretty mm -hmm. lame. You realise that, that your government in your jurisdiction is potentially not paying uh, any of your, uh, you know, you might get a little tax credit for, for R&D or something. Yeah. Like they're literally paying half the drill cost or half yeah. and half all of the exploration Cost. So it's quite fantastic. There's a, a $2.6 billion was raised in flow through in Canada in the last couple of years. So it's a huge amount of capital and it's dedicated for projects that the Canadian government and the provincial governments really get behind mining. And uh, and they do it in a meaningful way. There's tangible incentives on offer. And it's a much less, if you're looking at, at, at projects in different jurisdictions, you're going to be diluted less if you're investing in companies that have projects in Canada and in particular critical metals projects in Quebec, like we have. Now, the other point you made was Horton Lake. It is a good, it is a good question and an astute observation. I don't know if you'll allow me to share my Yeah, screen, go but, ahead. Uh, share screen. There's a little, there's a little slide on our um, uh, corporate presentation. This is this is Horton Lake, right? So I think um, I know the I, one you're going to show us because it's very pretty. Yep. That's the one. I hate, to, I hate to disappoint your viewers, but um, even I could hit a nine iron, probably a sandwich over Horton Lake. So it's not a big lake, right? It's uh, and I have that picture in there on purpose, but just to remind people, this is it's not a big lake. It's a it's a it's a marshy area. It's a pond, and there's 
thousands and hundreds of thousands of hectares of ground just like that in that part of the world. So yes, we've got to do obviously baseline studies and 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 you never you know you never know what you're going to find until you go and do all of the detail of work. But this is not a particularly benign part of the world. Uh, this is not a particularly interesting part of the world. There's there's, there's huge amounts of land that look just like this. It's flat. Um, and uh, there's a there's a, a two lane um, fully tarred uh, all weather. Oh highway that runs 10 kilometers past the project and it's quite interesting actually that when the project was discovered by inco in the 60s they went back there was no road that ran past the project this was in the middle of nowhere at that time and they went back five years in a row and drilled this project and bear in mind inco was probably the most successful nickel company at that time they had the best project in the world at sudbury and they liked this project they, uh, so much they went back five seasons in a row and drilled it. And now there's a two-lane highway that runs past it to build the hydroelectric power dams, which Quebec is famous for. That's the second largest hydroelectric complex in the world. And that is why Quebec has um, regularly amongst the lowest power cost in the world. And it's all green power, hydro-generated power, uh, runs south down through Quebec into the United States. And they export power all the way down the eastern seaboard of the United States. So... Quebec's a great place. It's supportive. It's got all of the infrastructure you need. Um, and uh, there's world-class mines there. And so you've got all of the support services and, and everything. It, it, thank you for, for I, I love the picture because it was important. It, get, it goes to show. And the fact there's a two-lane highway is good. But um, you've only just acquired the project. It was 10 years in private hands. Tell us how you're going to give shareholder value as we go into 2024, okay? You've got some drilling being set up for 2024. You say there's lots of news flow. Explain to us, because I know, Ivan, you look at this very much as a business and, and how to give that shareholder value. So taking it from the fact that you've only just joined, how is that going to turn out in 24? Yeah, sure. Look, I think there's, there's two ways you can think about it. Obviously, the work program that we've laid out that focuses on increasing the grade. Uh, it targets some um, resource upside, but fairly localised. There's going to be downhole geophysics, uh, down, downhole EM, that's going to show um, uh, the potential for the project to extend. It's completely open at depth. Uh, there's not, there's, there's really every single drill hole uh, below the deposit ends in mineralisation. And so, 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 you know, it can be expected that the project will extend. And until you drill a hole below that and find that it doesn't, You've got to believe that it continues to extend and, and the downhole EM that we're doing this. Week, EM, uh, by the way, sorry, Ivan, to interrupt you. Uh, EM, guys. Electro, electromagnetic survey. And, and, and it's particularly good at picking up um, what they call massive sulfide, so the most intense mineralisation which uh, which we do have on our project. And, and so it should be an effective tool and it's never been done on this project. Again, oh. like even before the 10 years where it did nothing, it was held by smaller operators who... Um, didn't seem to do, uh, you know, a modern, sophisticated exploration program. They were focused on on little parts of it, and uh, and and so there's a lot of work we can do. To, to in some ways, I look at the work that's being done, and I'm quite excited by the fact they found 28 million tons of this stuff without having done quite a lot of the things that we're planning on doing. So downhole and we're going to be collecting metallurgical sample. We're going to be demonstrating the potential for great upside through uh, additional byproduct credits that are sort of we know are there but are not included in the resource. Um, we're going to grow the resource uh, uh, locally. Um, and so all of those things are going to add value to the discovery. The, the, the asset that we've already found will make it bigger. We take those 410,000 tonnes of copper equivalent and make it go up. So you add value to the project, but that's kind of like, you get price and then there's value. So we can add value to the project, but really you've also, investors need to know how they're going to make price because they make the money when the price of the asset. Absolutely. So, yeah. so, you know, we're trading at this phenomenally large discount to the value of our asset. And then we, we look at around at our peer group that have comparable sized projects. They're all a bit different because that's the nature of these assets. They all vary in some way, but there's a lot of similarities in the peer group. We've got a little bit of information in our corporate presentation on that. And and they're trading multiples above us. So so and and I think some of the reasons are to do with the history and we've touched on those. But what we're going to be able to do, this is the first opportunity, this work program is the first opportunity we're going to be able to go out there and say, look, 
these are fresh results. This is real. Like is real. we're putting some holes through parts of the project that we know we're going to be able to put out. Um, I know we're going to be very nice intersections. And, and I think people are going to be like, oh, that's an interesting intersection. Oh my God, there's already a resource around this project and it's trading at what? Like uh, there's an awareness, a major awareness issue here. And it's my job to get out there and, and speak to you and the drill program and the work that we're doing, the metallurgical program. They're giving me props to go out and talk to people and an opportunity. And so I think we're going to be working on both sides of that. And and I and I see a huge opportunity, uh, you know, given where the share price is today, um, when I look at the quality of the asset. That's what the, Horden Lake, we've got to focus on where I, I don't want to run out of time. We focused a lot on uh, Horden Lake, but you've also got, I'm not even going to pronounce it in French. Let's just call it B-A-G-B because my French say très mal. We all tend to we all tend to avoid the curly belt air on glaze greenstone belt. So that's why our simple Australians just try to stick with BAGB. But yeah, like I, I um I was saying before, BAGB is extremely high grades. It's a large land package that was consolidated by Pivotal. Um and and on that there are instances of mineralization that are just bonanza grades. So really Really interesting stuff. Three and a half percent nickel, four and a half percent copper, four and a half PG over ten meters. So very, very high grades. A little bit uh, potty. The things that are being discovered. But okay. what we're doing, what we're doing, is looking to to essentially take a different look at the asset. And 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 you've got this a lot of mineralization spread out in a large area, and no one's actually looked for a feeder system that unifies that deposit. And so uh, it's it's a lower focus of ours given just the enormous opportunity we see at Horton Lake, but it's a project that, that that deserves a little bit of time. There's a lot of data to go through and we've got a geological model that we've developed to identify where the feeder system is for that. So, you know, you, you could argue that um, with a $10 million market cap, you could go and list a company with just BAGB in it and order like you get for free, I mean, then you start to get some kind of bonkers economics that uh, don't make a lot of sense. And But it's why people should be excited and 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 be following the story because uh, something's got to give. Something will give because just going back to BAGB, it's a quite a reasonable sized land package, 157 square K. You're not yep. really focused on that until you can, um, I guess, demonstrate the 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 value within Horton Lake and then hit to BAGB, would that be correct? Yeah, I, th I think just given where the capital market's at, the cash we've got available and the opportunity we see at Horton Lake, it's that's definitely where we're dedicating the most of our funding. We're doing some um, a lot more desktop work. We've got some survey work that's going to be done on BAGB, but it's a project that actually needs time and 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 the, yeah, it's a bit large land area so um there's a lot of opportunities to explore there and we need to really uh think very carefully about how we maximize our exploration spend there and 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 so you want to leverage the data you've got to its greatest ability because look at the end of the day drilling holes is the most ex expensive exploration you can do and so you need to be doing, you owe it to your shareholders in fact to do everything you can to um to 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 maximize the chances of drilling in the right place. And so that's really what we're focused on, that that lower cost, slower burn, but a really important uh exploration that happens before you pull out the drill rig. One of the things I like to ask people as well, Ivan, is have you got skin in the game? I think I think that's quite a tight capital structure, isn't it? Uh, yeah, we just raised a little bit of money and, and I'd been in blackout pretty much since I started. So that was the first opportunity for me to put in some money. So I put in some money in the uh, in the, in the the uh, fundraise we just put in. Directors combined put 235 grand. So we did 10% of the raise just with the five of us. Um, and uh, we've got a, yeah, we've got a top 20 that owns 60%. There's a lot of very loyal shareholders that, wow. that help the company transition from um, from Spain and they saw the opportunity in Horton Lake and they put their hand in their pocket and uh, and and um, and put the money in to acquire this project and they supported us in the raise. So I think we took 35% of the raise out of the uh, top 20. So good shareholders that, that new shareholders coming in today are, are very well aligned with people that have all put money in at the exact same point in time. So, so we're all there for the same reasons. Love it, love it. All right, we're running out of time. Uh, everyone knows I like to to turn around and say, all right, Ivan, I, it, by the way, fascinating. And I said at the start, ladies and gentlemen, I like to find these ones that are flying a little bit under the radar. It's not investment advice. 
go to their website, download. There's a presentation there that uh, they did at uh, the iMark conference in Sydney, which has got a lot more information on it. So if you want to dig a little deeper, um, go to the website, download that presentation and have a look into that and reach out to Ivan and ask him for his views. But let's wrap it up with three reasons why you think people should sit up and take notice of Pivotal Metals right now. Sure, yeah, look, pretty simple. We've got a strong balance sheet. We've just raised money and we've cleared debt and we've got a really clear plan to, to, to deploy that capital and to go and execute. We're going to be producing news and we're on the precipice of that starting in January. We're just about to go and do that work. So you've got a lot to look forward to. We've got basically a shell valuation yeah. uh, and it's a complete disconnect from the quality of the assets and hopefully I've, I've uh, provided a bit of information around why I think that's true today. And, and we're aligned and committed. There's been some renewal of the board. I'm a new MD. We just put money into the company. We're all in this together and we all believe uh, in the future of the, the company and the project. So 2024 is our year. You should take a look. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. He's been in the capital markets. He's gone. He's looked at lots of projects around the world. Now he's in the hot seat himself since September. Quebec, great jurisdiction. Copper, love copper, nickel, but it's also got that the, the platinum group medals as well. So there's lots of lots of interesting news, lots of news flow for 2024. Ivan, come back after that drilling starts in uh, in January when you get some results and uh, give us an update. But Absolutely for, will do. Thanks so much for joining me on Making Money Matter. Thanks a lot, Kerry.